Backwoods distillers in Eastern Europe will sometimes infuse their slivovitz with fruits and other local ingredients to enhance the flavor. And honey slivovitz is a bestseller. For this challenge, distillers will create their own take on an infused slivovitz with their choice of ingredients. Their goal is to complement and enhance the plum flavor. Welcome back, guys. As if y'all didn't have enough to worry about, we have a special guest judge. My name is Robert Bokufka. I'm working for Rudolf Jelinek Company. The company is on the market for uh, 125 years. He knows everything about making Slivovich, drinking Slivovich. Hell, he knows more about Slivovich than a jackrabbit knows about running. <laughs> I'm very excited to see what you can show. Having someone sitting there that actually makes Slivovich in Czech Republic means a lot. You got one hour. Your time starts now. Just both of these folks have done their homework. They have notes. They're working very methodically. They're in it to win it. My Slivovitz recipe, I want it to be aged, so I grab the chips. American untoasted, plus a little bit of French oak heavy toast to get some of those toasted flavors. Can you let us know, you know, what kind of plums did you use to do the mash? Yeah, I actually use uh, puree. Uh, they didn't say exactly what type of plums, but they said that they sourced them uh, perfectly ripe, so everything is good. They also handled it aseptically, which means when it got here, there's nothing else growing in it. That's what I wanted, knowing that there's no wild yeast or bacteria that are going to contaminate my fermentation. And how long did the uh, fermentation took? Uh, about six days. Six days. And Daniel, how about you? What kind of plums did you use? I had to use the uh, Italian prune plums from Oregon that were Elliott pitted and frozen, so they didn't have any pits in them. Uh, and they were broken open. So that way, uh, once I got them here, I could mix them around. They, the more the juice would come out as they thawed out, and then uh, pitch the yeast on there. Yeah. I did a little bit of sugar because I know they're looking for higher proof. I know the sugar would help, you know, give me a little bit more. So. And then I'm also making a little tea with a little bit of raisins. And then at the end, I'm going to add some wildflower honey. Danielle, can you tell us about the ingredients and the recipe? I'm going with some French oak, because I like the vanilla and the sweetness and lighter toast. I'm going to use some ginger. Ginger has kind of like this citrusy aroma that I think pairs well with, with the plum brandy. And then a little bit of lime. And then for sweetness, I'm going to hit it with a little bit of the honey. In our Slivovich, uh, we are using uh, linden honey because we own about uh, 450 acres of uh, plum orchard, so we need uh, bees which are producing honey. We're 30 minutes in, 30 minutes left. Ooh. Watch out. Well, that bursted. Oh, it broke. Bottom popped off of it. That throws a hitch in your get along, don't it? I don't think I've ever seen a flavor in this intense. I mean, they're a measuring, they're a weighing, they're sipping, they're tasting, they're pinching and dobbing. I mean, it's crazy. Very precise. Yeah. That was a seal of approval. It looked to me like, like me. she was liking what she's a tasting. I drink it. All right, guys. With time Here to we spare, are. we'll be out to get you in a little bit. All right. Good luck, Daniel. Thanks. Right now, Daniel's got to poke her face from hell. Yeah. You can't tell if he's liking it, if he hates it. Absolutely stoic. He's going to lower the proof. 50 milliliters of water. I think I'm ready. All right. Is that it? You got it, yeah. Good luck to you, Daniel. Good luck. Let's get some glasses and get started tasting this right here. Nicole's first up. I was dialed in. I, was... I didn't even look over at yeah. you. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I, I got to get my stuff done. I'm on a clock. Right, yeah, exactly. You started out at 117, I believe. She did. Pleasant mm. on the nose. It smells really, yeah. really good. You get your nose out, you smell plum. Sweet plum. Many people were thinking, you know, they have to put it in the freezer. But the best temperature? 
is to have the room temperature, because then you can really get the smell. Get the smell from the plums, and I still smell the alcohol over there. A little of you yeah, know, there's like the, still mm -hmm. quite a bit of alcohol. It's pretty alcohol. high proof. I get honey, I get raisin on the coals. It, it's buttery on the finish. I like it tastes the great. I think, it tastes I like really the way good. It this is this is good. Slivovitz. Let's okay. try old Daniel's out here, Tammy. Daniel, it's a hundred proof, easy. It smells altogether different than hers. Citrusy. Oh yeah. Citrus, yeah. Yeah, I get that lime, don't you? Regarding the smell, I like more Daniel's. Regarding the taste, it's tequila for me. I like the taste of it. Well, it's a lot of ginger, and I'm not digging that. I used a little bit more of the ginger, but it was clouding up, so I didn't want to push it too hard. Yeah, it's, it's, it's again, for me, it's too much alcohol. Daniel's is easier on the nose, but it's more harsh on the palate. Yeah. It's going to be a bad decision, because I really like both of them. I know where I'm at. Well, if we're locked in, I'll go get them. Nicole, Daniel, I got to hand it to y'all. I've never seen anything more methodical in the history of this show that was impressive. Just the meticulousness which you approached this kind of blew me away. I'm an old moonshiner, you know, and we don't really do things that way. But with that being said, Daniel, you gave nothing away. A little trickery went on with you now. You started adding some different ingredients that, for me, I think you covered up the plum. Uh, but it tastes really good. In my opinion, because of the citrus, it reminds you more of uh, tequila. Oh, really? I did, okay. Yeah, I didn't feel so much sleeve of it uh, okay. in it, yeah. but it's uh, my opinion. Yeah. It held together front to back. The ginger was, like I said, a little harsh, but you could still pull the honey and the lime out, you know, taking everything into consideration. I think it's a pretty marketable drink. Thank you. Nicole? Now, yours was very, very good. It was honey forward, hit me right in the crease. <laughs> Your fruity flavor comes out on the nose, and then you get the alcohol when you taste it, and then on the back of the palate, there we go, we got plum. So we got plum all the way through. All in all, it was a great drink. Thank you. Well, guys, you've heard everything that's been said right here. Unfortunately, somebody gets cut, but the master distiller, you gonna win your bragging rights, Beyond that, you'll win a limited run of your liquor at Sugarlands Distilling Company in Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Nicole, you're the next master distiller. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm gonna bring everything that I've learned here and bring it back to my students and hopefully teach them a thing or two about moonshining. And I'm excited to actually have something that people can buy and put that to my name.